Hello, 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 hello. I woke somebody up and I look really dark tonight. How's everybody doing? How are we doing today? Sorry, it took me extra minute to come on. I'm not going to lie. I lost my vape. Not going to lie to y'all. I've been in here for like over an hour and didn't even realize that I didn't have it. So I went to like vape really quick before the live and I was like, uh, and if you vape, you know, if you lose it, it's like losing your right hand or something. Sorry. She's just getting comfortable. Okay. Sorry about that. You can hear her caller. By the way, I mean, if we have to talk about, you know, rough cases on this channel, at least we have this dog to look at, you know, I mean, she brightens up my day. And then I also have my cat over here laying in the dog bed and he's, I could look at him all day when he's sleeping. I just, they're my babies. But anyway, <laughs> welcome to the channel. I'm Tanya or Titanium Built. We talk true crime daily here. So if that's something that you're into, um, you know, hit the like button if you guys don't mind and subscribe to the channel. We would love to have you subscribe. We are getting close to 15,000 subscribers. And once we do, we are going to have a giveaway. Yeah, Rocky and Rocky and Mia. Araya's on the bed. I went there to look and I'm like, oh, she is having a time of her life. She likes to be alone. You know, this one bothers her a lot. So, well, let's see who's here. Hello, Cheryl. She's on the phone. She's a busy woman. Hey, Jan. Hey, Catherine. I loved your live earlier, Jan. You did such a good job. Hey, DM. And I happened to be on. I was getting ready to leave. I was like, oh, no, I can't leave yet. Hey, Ladybug. Welcome in, everybody. I wish I was like faster at clicking the names, but hey, Catherine. Hey, Miss Mary Beth. Oh, well, tell them, you know, you got to go out because you're getting a new dress. Get a new dress. You have to go out. You have to go out and do something. I thought about taking some pictures tomorrow, but I don't know. I need some new ones. Hey, Steve. It's literally been like a year. Huh. Hey, Otto. Except for some, I, I've taken some pictures for you guys, I guess. Hey, Mike. Welcome in, everybody. Hey, Steve, we got everybody in here. It's good to see you. Hey, Leslie, it's good to see you. Pocket American Bully Mama. Holly. Man, I'm getting good at saying that without looking. Hey, Maureen. Welcome in. Hey, Sunshine. Hey, Old Glory. Hmm. Welcome in, everybody. It's good to see you guys. Good to see everybody. I'm trying to get to the bottom, but you guys are all here. Hey, Aries. I love it. I love having a full house. There's nothing like having a full house, you know? Um, but we have some stuff to talk about tonight. So before we do all that, you know, I got to say my spiel. I got to say, you know, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. Um, if you want to join our channel membership, we would love to have you. We are like, y'all have been spoiling me with the memberships. Mary Beth, especially we hit over 300 subscribers. I mean, um, members, I'm sorry. And I would look today and I was like, what? I was like, we did what? So, man, I hope you guys all like the live tomorrow that I have planned. Um, it's going to be about 1 o'clock, 1.15. So, it'll be a good time. And I don't know what I'm trying to do over there, but I don't need to do anything over there. So, actually, I do. I'm going to go ahead and drop our channel membership link if you'd like to join. And then we'll go ahead and we'll get started with tonight's live. What happened? Area Channel New. Hey, Miss R003. Hey, PKC. Oh, I love seeing um, people in there. It's so fun. It was so fun. And it's really hard. I'm sorry, Jan. I was trying to help you. I, like if I had my computer, it would have been better, but I didn't have my computer. And I'm like thinking in my head and I'm like, I'm really bad at, I'm good at like, just, I don't read it. I don't read it. It's so bad. Oh, thanks, Cindy. I appreciate that. I hope so. I really do. I love hanging out with you guys every night. I really, I genuinely do. I mean, or I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. And I'm actually here by myself. Vincent's not here. So that's why I feel like it's super quiet here. Like really quiet. You're fine. I winged it. I was going to actually, Jan, I was going to go look at my live because I think that you had more people in your live than me. I used to do lives. And I don't even think anyone even knew who I was. <laughs> I was going to go back and check out my first live. Um, actually, I have to do that. We'll have to do that sometime. That'll be fun. So I've been snooping around like we do, you know. Um, we're going to be talking about Sebastian Rogers' case tonight, of course. Um, we've been 
hitting on this case, you know, since it, probably a few, what, like a week after maybe, um, about a week after it happened, there wasn't a lot of people covering this, um, case. There was like no news outlets were covering it. News nation wasn't court TV. Nobody, nobody was. Um, so recently this story has blown up. Um, it went from a missing persons case, like, you know, where we're like, I don't know, we're just digging and we're just seeing kind of what's going on and we're putting out the facts. And then all of a sudden, you know, the one person that sees Sebastian alive last being his mother and maybe his stepfather, um, they're acting very suspicious. They're coming out. They're just doing all the things, doing the mostest that they could do. I mean, it's been really crazy. But you know what they haven't been doing? They haven't been posting about Sebastian on their social media. And I don't get that. Um, social media, like I know that we're, I know social media can be a pain in the ass, but you have that with everything, you know? But social media literally can help you find your child way faster than a search team almost could. Do you get what I'm saying? Like this could go out to thousands, maybe millions of people. Whatever they're saying is it is, it's going out to a lot of people. And they, if they are talking about their son more or stepson, more pictures of him, you know, more post of him, maybe if he's out there and he's alive, you never know. You never know. You know what I mean? You never know. Unfortunately, I kind of think that, you know, he might not be here any longer, but I'm hoping for the best. I really am, especially for Seth, his his father, his that man can break your heart. So there's a lot of stuff that come out. So I always try to tell you guys kind of what we're going to go over in the beginning of the live, kind of like a reader, reader's digest of sorts. So basically, we're just going to go through some Facebook posts that have to do with the Cajun Navy. They're the only ones that are really talking. And then we're going to um, just do a couple updates that are in the case. Then we will play Sebastian's dad just did a new interview. And Trev time. I'm not sure if you know who he is. I'll make sure I link his um, channel in the chat, like throughout the live. Um, he is a creator. I believe he's um, semi new. Like, I, th I don't think he's been doing videos for like that long. I think it's been less than a year. I know, I know him from watching Brooks's channel, Crime Lines and Lies, because he gets on our panel sometimes. And I've known that's how I know him. Um, but he does cover like the Summer Wells case and he's been covering Sebastian's case pretty hardcore. I mean, I think he went out there and even searched and he's very factual. Um, he's a really good creator. He's, he's very good. He's very factual, very neutral. All the things that you should be, you know, all the things that I should probably be more of, <laughs> but I can't help it. I got a big mouth. So um, he did an interview with Chris Proudfoot's ex-wife. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Get the tissues ready. I mean, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, it's sad. And I thousand percent believe every single word this woman says. She's too emotional. She's too, you know, she's invested. Like she, you could tell this hap really happened to her. So. Oh yeah, prayers for your son. What happened, Lenora? Prayers. Oh, yeah. So let's talk just so did you see the interview? Yes, I did. I sure did. I sure did. Um, and it was it was wild. I saw about I watched about a little more than half. I was extremely upset with what that woman had to go through. Um I've never been through really DV myself, but I've heard horror stories. You know, my sister-in-law is a case manager for domestic violence. Um, and it's just really, it's really sad what, what women will go through and what they'll put up with. Um, because, you know, they think that the person's going to change or, you know, someone gets pregnant, like, the you know, well, obviously the woman gets pregnant and, you know, she thinks, well, now that I'm pregnant, the family's going to get better because we're on this baby. And then they have, she has the baby and then it doesn't get any better. A lot of times it could get worse. So it's just, I'm glad that she got out of that situation. 
Um, and maybe, I don't know. I don't know about Katie, but maybe, maybe Katie can, you know, um, if she didn't do anything, I don't, I, I mean, I just don't know. I don't, I just don't think that she wouldn't, she, if something happened to him in that home that night, she knew about it. She was there. She was there. I just don't get it. Like if she doesn't have anything to do with this, then why didn't she go to his bedroom? Like little things when she heard a thud. She talks about how, you know, he's autistic and this and that and the other. And I don't believe he had that money, that much trouble. I really don't. I think that he was pretty, on, you know, on high, like, what's it called? High um, functioning. But for her to not even be like posting anything, I'm refreshing, refreshing the page just in case she posted something though. So, I mean, it's been like six days since she's posted anything. To me, I would be posting Every chance I got, if I'm using the toilet, post on the Facebook, you know, my mom used to say that everyone takes a poop. She used to want my brother to call her. <laughs> She's like, you got five minutes in the morning to call me. It, it was so funny. Your daughter had a child just, just to try and fix the relationship chance. Yeah. And you think it could work, but it don't, it doesn't usually just makes it harder because then you got a baby and babies cry and babies need things. They're babies, you know? I mean, they're cute. I saw so many babies today at Sam's. I was like so excited. Um, and he's just the cutest. He's the cutest kid. So she hasn't posted anything. We all have been looking over here at Chris Proudfoot's um, Facebook. I was looking at it earlier and let's refresh just in case. He does still have all the videos on there. But one of them, this one from two days ago, he took off of there. So I'm going to go back through my lives and I'm going to figure out which one that was because we went through all of them. We went through this one. I think last night, I just can't remember what it said. You know what I mean? Wait, was that the one? No, that wasn't the McGregor one. Does he still have that one on there? Might be that one he deleted. Nope. It's there. It is. It's still there. Yeah. So if you want to go over there, it's Chris Proudfoot. I mean, he only has that's that's like one. I don't know why he even has his picture. Why do you even have that over your profile? Your profile picture. I just don't get it. I'm just gonna keep getting puppies till my son and girl, his girlfriend give me grandbabies. That's so funny. Yeah, I hope I hope she's safe too. Thank you, DM. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I have hope, you know, because Nancy was 38, 38 when she had her kids. 38, oh, 48, 48, 40. I'm sorry, 48. Cause I'm 38. I'm like, dang girl. But that'd probably be hell on wheels. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through everyone's Facebook real quick and then we'll, we'll move on. Cause so go over to Sumner County. You'd think they'd be posting a lot too. They haven't posted since March 15th. I'm like what's going on here? What's happening? We haven't forgot about Sebastian Rogers. Well, you know, um, think you did think you did. It's like, what is going on? Hey, Dreamcatcher. Hey, Cat's Life. Welcome in, Robin. Welcome in, everybody. I'm going to, we're going to figure out a better way, my, a better system here so I can see the chat better. One of these days. One of these days. I probably just need to wear my glasses. Um, so, you know, they posted people that were in custody, things of that nature, but nothing about him. March 13th, March 2nd. Like March 2nd, and then went all the way to March 13th. Like, what's going on here? I know, Aries. Yeah, I'm getting to that one too. Yeah. They'd be scared. So we do have um some people though posting from Cajun um United United Cajun Navy. So Todd Terrell will go through his first. He's the guy. Right up here, the guy that's been talking, he was talking all through um, Riley Strand's case. He's like the, as far as I know, he's like the main person for this chapter of this organization that they named. And it says right here, you know, he's the founder and president. On their company page, like their, you know, official page for the um, United Cajun Navy, it just popped up and they just started posting on that two days after Riley Strand was found. 
They never posted on that Facebook before that. Now they it's flooded with missing person flyers. Like they have been working like all these cases when they haven't. Like nobody, you haven't. It's just very crazy. I restarted mine too, list before I came on. Oh my God, so low. She said, I just took my cat for a walk. I was not kidding. kidding. I, he won't let me. I wish Rocky would let me get him a stroller. I take him everywhere with me, but he hates being moved. <laughs> so unfortunately, we're not going to move him. Um, so this was at nine hours ago. He's in Louisiana. Okay. That's not Tennessee, but all right. Uh, whatever you say, sir, I'm going to grab my drink really quick and we're going to go through this. I'll know Aries. I debunked it. I went through all kinds of stuff showing that they, they weren't the same United, um, Cajun Navy as the other one we went through and we saw how the girl that found the credit card for Riley Strand was only one commenting on that page. She was the only one like running it pretty much. Like, why are you with the United Cajun Navy now? Cause you're supposed to be a citizen sleuth just out there looking for, you know, stuff for Riley of Riley's or looking for Riley. Very weird. Very weird. I don't care what you say. That's just weird. That would be like me going out there, finding a card, and all of a sudden I'm with the United Cajun Navy. I don't agree. I don't, it just doesn't make, make it make sense. Oh, Solo, I tried to put a cat leash on my cat or cat collar and he freaked one time. And that was when he was a baby. He'd really hurt me now. Okay. Let me make me a little bigger because I just know y'all like to see me. I'm just kidding. All right. So this is the United Cajun Navy. They have a little bit to say. Actually, this is Todd Terrell's personal page. So this isn't the actual United um, Cajun Navy page. It's his personal Facebook. But he's been putting a lot of stuff out there, you know, about this. So let's read. Um, this is, I think, the only post. Yeah. So, and I don't know who he thinks he is with this post, but okay. All right. All right. To my loyal friends and followers. Can you see that? probably not that good. Let me, I don't know if I can make it any bigger, but oh, there we go. That might help you guys read it a little bit. Um, to all my friend, my loyal friends and followers, both personally and United Cajun Navy, both myself and United Cajun Navy have recently once again been attacked by strangers, other groups and fellow search organizations that have nothing better to do than harass great people volunteering their own time to help us help others. Now, what search organization would go after them for searching for a lost child? I don't think it was EquiSearch. Right. I love it when they say this. No, no receipts. We're not going to show you nothing, but it says, I'm not going to get into specific details because unfortunately there is more hate, jealousy, anger, and bad intentions in so many people these days. Even Jesus himself won't make these haters hearts change. Wow. Even Jesus himself, he brought Jesus into this. You don't be bringing Jesus into this. Like, what the heck does he talk about? Um, to the, uh, to the couple other search organization bashing, organizations bashing us. All y'all are doing is making it unsafe for everyone to help. We must be doing stuff right to keep getting attacked and continuing to prosper. That's not what it is, dude. You said you were something that you weren't. All y'all is making people not want to help any Cajun Navy organization to the people saying we are doing things wrong. Shame on y'all. To the ones who bash me for helping the special needs kids. Shame on y'all. Nobody's bad. I've never heard anyone bashing him helping special needs. Have you? Have has anyone heard that he, that people were saying anything about him and special needs kids? I would I would never. Especially the ones who have special needs children themselves. Well, who would that be? That would have to be someone that he knows personally that has a special need child. Very weird. And happy Good Friday. I meant to tell you guys that. Um, look, I even have a post-it. Because I, I was going to remind myself. So, I guess Good Friday. 
happy. I don't think it's happy Good Friday, but you know. Yeah, don't be bringing Jesus into this right now, okay? This is Easter weekend. What the hell? Really, Robin? Man. I just debunked them. You know what I mean? I just went through and just was like, this is what I found. This is what, you know, I'm presenting. You know, please, Sebastian, go to your father. I know, West. I hope he would just, like, go somewhere and tell. Like, I wish he was somewhere and he could just go somewhere and tell someone, you know, I'm Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. And my dad told me if I ever needed help to ask for an officer, can you help me? I would love for that. That would be so nice if that happened on our live. It says United Cajun Navy has a worldwide network of volunteers and we are more than search and rescue. Search and rescue currently is a portion of what we do. There are so many people in the world needing help and not enough people to help. These other groups bashing us need to look in the mirror, realize what their real intentions are and think about what today Good Friday is all about. We well, just said something about Jesus. If everyone is bashing us, would you? would do what they say and stop bashing us, the world would be a better place. Check these people bashing us out. Look at what they really do and how they operate. Listen to the nonsense they, they, they saying. Look at what we do helping people. We are the United, keyword, United Cajun Navy. We work with many other groups behind the scenes to avoid them being attacked. What do you mean to avoid them being attacked? You back, you just backed out because you said you were getting threats. So how would you be the person going in to help other people not get attacked? Make that make sense. Please keep these people in your prayers. It's a sad world we live in and getting worse. Well, yeah. Have a blessed Easter. You too. Check out what we got going on in the next few days. And then check out what they are doing. Besides bashing. Okay. Oh, whatever. They're not blocking people. What? Jonathan Lee Riches, the United Cajun Navy, are butt hurt that Seth Rogers went on Dolly's channel. <laughs> <laughs> Better get some thicker skin in this business. Yeah. You know, like, what if they fi actually find somebody? Have they actually ever succeeded in finding somebody? I'm going to say no. Because these are all pictures. They, these are all brand new, y'all. We went through this. Remember? Oh, I have it all like, you know, blown up. But they just started posting two days after Riley Strand was found. Very weird to me. So then this is their, you know, missing persons public group. 6.2K members. And this one I thought was... Like, who are you? Like, again, who are you? I don't get it. I mean, you're, if, if it's not coming from the police's mouth, then I believe in it. I'm not believing it anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Just like when people come into like a chat and they say something the creator doesn't agree with and they're just, they're like, you're a troll or something. And they're like, no, we just asked a question. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've, that's happened not to me, but I've seen it. Just like, it's like, what? And it's not like anything bad. So here it says, anyone who deliberately impedes the investigation and search for Sebastian Rogers will automatically be considered a person of interest, especially when we know these, those individuals have extensive criminal records. Who do you think they're talking about there? Hmm. Maybe JLR. He's not a search group. That's what I'm going to say, Harlow. But JLR has been going after them. And that sounds like right there that they're, they're shooting back. Cause it says, um, especially when we know those individuals have extensive criminal records. I mean, he was in the pen for 10 years. We are finalizing some Intel that we will be turning over to law enforcement. And then we will begin the process of exposing those who actively tried to stop this search. What the heck? What the, like, why are they doing this? They're doing the most is just move on, keep searching. You're afraid of JLR? For real? The dude just holds his phone. Like, it's crazy. 
falling. Yeah. Did you see that, Dolly? Yeah, falling asleep driving. Yeah, he sure did. Sure did. That's what happens when you just, I'm sorry, but that's what happens when you get a little greedy. You, If you're that tired, you need to stop driving because you could hurt somebody. He could have hit a car that had a baby in it, a child in it, a person, just anybody. I mean, obviously there's a person, but could have seriously hurt them, maybe killed them. And that wouldn't have been good. I, I've, I've been that tired before where I've almost fallen asleep at the wheel. And it's it's scary thing, you know? I mean, I, I've been guilty of it myself, so I can't say too much. But he was asleep for, it seemed like, a minute. So apparently they're, like, going to expose people. I'm, I'm assuming it's JLR. I don't know. These be, but It says these people are dangerous criminals, and the good people in and around Sumner County have the right to know about the evil embedded in their community. I don't think that's about JLR. This is far from our first rodeo. Um, maybe Riley Strand, but who'd you get before that? Because we don't have any posts before that, you know, on social. We are honored to have been embraced by prominent members of this community, law enforcement, and elective officials. Just because a handful of mentally ill people with too much free time get emboldened by online keyboard warriors does not mean we will ever stray from our mission. We cannot be scared. We cannot be intimidated. We cannot be told where to go or when to leave. We have plenty of these violent types slapped with restraining orders, thrown in jail, fired from their jobs, and many other consequences. Okay. To those threatened attack or threatened to, to attack, we have your voices recorded. Uh, hold on a second. Nope. Oh, wait, hold on. Damn. Damn, I hate that. Tennessee's a one. I thought I thought I meant yes, but it's a one party consent state, so they can do that. So they can record somebody um, as long as they know that they're recording them. Only it's like one person has to know. So wow. Whew. I don't mind JLR, but I do mind the fact that he. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the Proudfoots myself. I'm not a fan of them. But as of right now, they're not suspects that we know of. And for him to be following them from their home to a campsite, that is extremely, in my opinion, going out of bounds. Because they literally, are, they left their home because they were afraid of YouTubers and TikTokers. And we know who they're, they're talking about. Because I didn't see very many people other than a couple, like Cluminati, I think, drove by the house maybe. I don't even know if she did. But JLR was the only person I saw drive by the house. And get out and start yelling at, I don't know if it was Katie or Chris's um, sister. But like, you can't, there, there's some things you just need to not do. You know what I mean? Just. It's in poor taste, in my opinion. I think that he's a good sleuth. I think he's good at getting information. I think, you know, he's really good at the, all that stuff. I just, there's just some stuff, you know. I, I just feel like there's just some stuff that you should just not do. So then the United Cajun Navy, this is the 2016 one. They have 234K followers. This is supposed to be like the legit one. And the other one is... Um, I don't, I want to say like fraud, but they're just taking the name, you know, like when you apply for an LLC, like they must not have LLC. They must not have one because it tells you, you hello. Like they're like, no, um, you can't have that name because it's already taken. So here they posted, um, it doesn't, this is their only post. It was five hours ago, probably six hours ago by now. Let me see. Oh, still five hours. So. It just says it amazes us. And so they've been going back and forth with the unit other um, Cajun Navy. So it's been kind of like um, what's going on. It says it amazes us how some organizations say they have all these boots on the ground and there is nothing going on or no proof of their efforts to show for the large amount of donations collected. Excuses aren't always true. We learned that while doing rescues during Harvey when someone said that people were shooting at the Cajun Navy. Those shots were never heard in the area at that time. It was a diversion. 
When multiple news agencies interviewed our CEO asking if we were leaving because of the so-called gunshots, his reply was, and I quote, hell no, we are staying until the last person's out of the water. We have guns too and know how to use them. This is who Cajun Navy 2016 is as an organization. There is no smoke and mirrors here, never has and never will. They pissed. They're like, why are you leaving? You know, wimps. Do you know what I mean? You mean, you know? Very crazy. Yes. Yeah. I, oh, no, Harlow. I don't think they do. No, they don't. But I have a tape recorder. I have like an old-fashioned one. I was getting a drink here. I'll show it to you guys. I think you guys actually saw it before. When I had to record that call um, to Nez Perez County Jail in Idaho. Because someone said um, I was lying about something. And I said, we're going to go to the source. And I proved that wrong, didn't I? I did. Because I don't. I, that's one thing I don't do. I ain't going to lie. I'm not good at it. So I don't even try to attempt it. Like, I'll literally be just be smiling while I'm saying it. So we're, um, the TBI deputies, they held a meeting with Sebastian Rogers' biological parents. And this was the other day. Um, we really don't know what was said in that meeting, but to me, I don't know if they're just telling them, Hey, we've, you know, searched this many miles out. We haven't found him. Maybe they're just going to be doing more of an investigation now, pulling back even more, but it just, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. Yours does, and it's old iPhone 11. Oh, Otto, how you do that? I know you can record, like, record on it, but I didn't know you could record as you're talking. Like that, yeah, I, don't, I didn't know you could do that. And I have an iPhone 13 Pro or something like that. That was weird. Okay, so look at these guys. They're matching. That's so cute. Um, this, this is a short, ad, a short article here. Um, but it says the Tennessee Bureau of investigation investigators with the Sumner County Sheriff's office held a meeting with the biological parents of Sebastian Rogers on Thursday. How do you think that interview went? Cause because Seth said that she hasn't, she hasn't talked to him. They haven't talked to each other in weeks. So they probably haven't seen each other in months. A month, probably, because he probably had Sebastian, you know, maybe the weekend before. Yeah, he would have had him the weekend before, because I think they did every other weekend or something like that. So, hey, pretty K, how are you doing? Um, but let me go ahead and read the rest of this for you. I was reading the chat. Sorry, I get distracted. Um, Sumner County Sheriff Sonny Weatherford told confirmed a WSMV four that the meeting occurred but did not reveal any details on why the meeting happened or who was the lead during the meeting. Now, that's what I mean. Like, if it was just something like, hey, we're just talking to them about, you know, the, the investigation, just kind of like where we're at, I think they would come out and say that. Because that's not anything to hide. Like, we were just filling them in. We wanted to get the, you know, biological parents together because we haven't done that yet. Wanted to see what they said collectively together. I don't know. It says Rogers, who's 15 years old and has autism, has been missing since February 26th. On March 8th, authorities searched a Kentucky landfill for evidence related to Sebastian's appearance. Disappearance. This is appearance. <laughs> disappearance, but no leads or evidence pertaining to Rogers' whereabouts were discovered during the operation. The decision to search the landfill was made in accordance with ongoing investigative investigative investigative, sorry, efforts and information gathered in the search for Rogers, the Sumner County Sheriff's Office said. An Amber Alert has was issued on behalf of Sebastian. The TBI has said there is nothing that points to foul play in Sebastian's disappearance, but also nothing that has been, that has ruled out foul play. Now, what's weird to me is the scent. The dogs, I'm sure they had multiple dogs go out there and, and do their smell test, you know? And they're, they're all hidden right outside the house. 
which is kind of weird to me because wouldn't if he wouldn't he have went to school like the day before and walked at least out to the bus stop or like to the end of the driveway to be picked up by the bus. Maybe his mom takes him and that's why it stopped right there. Um, but I doubt it. I would think he would ride the bus. If you guys know, let me know. Yeah, the TBI needs to be doing some shit over there. You're right. Let's get 100 again, Mary Beth. That's right. We can do it. Um, and we're going to listen to some of that interview today, too. So I want to listen to that. Um, but we're going to listen to Seth Rogers' father. Now, you see this? You see this t-shirt? Have you seen me? I never have seen his parents have anything like that on. Now that's how you do it. And I could see his, I could see his dad passing out shirts there too. Like, can you, can you wear one? Can you wear one? Make me one up, Seth. I'll wear it. I'll wear it around. I mean, it's very, very, very sad. I feel very, very, very bad for this guy. Um, man, just he, when, when he was on with Brian and the other night, his eyes were so red. You could tell he had been crying for days. He hasn't slept. Dude looks like he hasn't even ate. I mean, he looks kind of slimmer than me. I'm going to have to look up an old picture of him and see. Because you'll drop weight crazy when you're stressed like that. I hope he's eating. I hope he's getting water and food in him. He's got to be doing, you know, he's got to be taking care of himself. Thank you, Riddler. Oh, I hope you have a wonderful Easter. Thank you. Happy Easter. Good, Happy Good Friday. Happy all the things. It's good to see you. Tell your mom too. Tell her happy Easter. He lost weight. Auto, you think so too? We miss you, Riddler. Thank you for the $5 super sticker or super chat. I love that. I have to put the heart there. <laughs> we miss you so much. We really do. Um, this is, so this is Seth Rogers. I haven't, I didn't get to hear all this. So I'm, I'm extremely interested to listen to it with you guys. So, like I said, he's been looking for his son. If you guys have ever, if you guys know about the Crystal Rogers case, Tommy Baller, her dad, that this is who they're, they are literally, they remind me of the same, they're the same, same mentality. They're not stopping. They're going out every day, all day searching. They don't care. They're searching, you know, wherever they need to search. So we'll go ahead and play this. If you guys don't mind taking a second, hit the like button um, and all those things since your son went missing. How are you feeling today? Same as I was yesterday. Um, just continuing the search, continue looking. I'm not gonna give up. Nobody can make me give up. And where have you been searching? Where do you think he is? I've been searching everywhere. I mean, anything out of that, that five mile radius that the initial search did, they covered everything there. But there's stuff elsewhere. I mean, we got a lot of territory to cover. And it being over a month, he could be anywhere currently. So I'm searching everywhere. You, Katie, and Chris had a meeting with TBI today. Did you find out any Well, Chris was there? Oh, they had Chris there too? Oh, that was, oh, that was probably weird. Okay. Not that I can discuss. Any progression that might show hope in this search? Oh, I always have hope can't take that away from me. And how confident are you that Sebastian is alive and what do you think he's doing right now? Uh, pretty sure he's probably playing video games somewhere. Nobody's letting him, you know, whoever's got him, they're not letting him see the regular news. Mm -hmm. They're not letting him surf the internet or else he'd know that I'm looking for him and he'd know that he should actually be trying to get a hold of me. And that keeps me going. Is there a strong reason to believe he may have been a, a, abducted? I don't know if he's been abducted or if he's just, you know, over at a friend's house. Never know. But I'll know when I find him. I'll know exactly what has happened to him. And other news outlets were reporting that there were lights seen in the backyard that were caught on camera by a neighbor's video. Is that true? No. What that was was a trash truck went through 
picked up trash. And when it left, of course, it went faster. It didn't have to stop to pick up trash. That's just false information provided by a particular person. Did the dogs ever pick up a scent? Who was the particular person? My information that I've been given, no. Did they find anything on Sebastian's cell phone that would, you know, kind of show that he was going to run away or where he might be? Not that I know of. He didn't have any internet access or anything on there. He would have been able to call, text, take a picture, send a picture, use the calculator. That's about it. Uh, was Sebastian in school on Friday the day? I wonder if. Yeah. I wonder if he had maps on his phone. Because that's not like a bad thing to have. You I mean like Google Maps or whatever it is, or if I, iPhone has a map thing. Because if he had a map, it, I mean, I would think he would know his address of 15, even with autism. He could, you know, put his address in and find out where he was, but he doesn't have his phone. So never mind about that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, are you, Chris or Katie, or any of you suspects in this case? No, we're not. Uh, have you been cleared? I don't know. The investigation is still ongoing. We wouldn't be cleared until the investigation is done. But currently, from my understanding, they don't have any information that would attach us to any we're ongoing. Okay. Um, so CPS has there gone it is. to Katie's house before. You didn't know about that until this investigation. How does that make you feel? That somebody somewhere dropped the ball because I was never informed. And... I'm the biological father. I have joint legal, joint physical custody. Somebody dropped the ball and didn't reach out and inform the, the father, which is me. And I don't understand why the state dropped the ball on that one. And how did you find out about CPS? Podcast. Oh, gosh, that's terrible. And, I mean, how does that, does that concern oh my you, gosh. especially with this case, that they might have done something to cause him to run away? I don't know what that really means. But I just know that I don't have all the information. Um, is there an official timeline? And I know people, you know, there was, you know, we went to bed at this hour, but does TBI or anyone have an official timeline as to the series? I'm pretty sure they do, but I'm not involved in the investigation, so I wouldn't have it. Have the three of you been in contact every day like you were several weeks ago about this? I was in contact with both Katie and Chris today but i've heard he said his phone is open and available well, so is mine you um, can leave a voicemail like seven or eight people have already left me voicemails today i'm just i'm going you know i get people calling me while i'm on the phone and it's like i can't just sit there and answer the phone for everybody if i did that, that I probably, right. probably wouldn't be able to get out of my house there's been a lot of criticism over this investigation. I'm sure you've received criticism as well as the proud foot set. How does that make you feel in a time where you're just trying to find your son? People are being, well, that those that goes back to those keyboard warriors I talked about on the first interview that you and I had. They're still at it. They'll never stop. There's cowards in this world. And then there's people who are go-getters. Absolutely. My, beat, my feet, they're on the ground. His feet are probably blistered up. They're never going to leave the ground. I'm going to find my son. Period. And play. Seth, can I come stay on your couch, man? I'll help you. All I got's time. Don't make me start van life, van life, and it up and going everywhere. And you know, today on moving forward, anything, any more resources being used on this investigation, or anything you have to say about that? The United Cajun Navy is currently sitting down there right now at 90 Volunteer Drive in Hendersonville. 10.30. That's when volunteers need to show up. 10.30. Show up, have your ID, sign the paperwork, and they send people out in teams. When you show up, there ain't nobody there except for a couple people. That's because they've already sent teams out. They're just going to keep sending teams out until we find my son. Have there been um, a lot of volunteers coming out to help find Sebastian? Today there was, and I want to thank everybody who did come out. Oh, yeah. We are seeing an increase, and we're going to continue to see an increase. I'd like the whole state of Tennessee to volunteer, and then mm -hmm. we'll hit other states. And you're Sebastian's father. Tell me, what is Sebastian like? 
He's a unique child. All right. He can be, he can, I mean, there's, it's really hard to describe my son. I mean, besides being unique, whether he's up to no good or he's <laughs> up to good, he's still, he's just got that uniqueness about him. It's, it's, it's really hard to describe. I mean, he's my mini me. Mm. If he if he has a goal, he's going to accomplish that goal. See, you can see he's you know, smiling almost, school, like when he thinks of his son. Him. All the kids are wanting to know when he's going to come back. They want to help and volunteer. Teachers are wanting. They're putting out prayers every day. You know, everybody. It's coming up. It's Easter. I'm hoping for an Easter miracle. You know, that would I can be great. Use it in my life right now. And why did they search the landfill? I have no idea. They didn't. I'm not part of the investigation. They're not going to tell me stuff. I am emotionally attached, as any parent should be. And how often do you meet with TBI? If I, I call them all the time. Call, text, hey, any new news? They either let me know or they let me know. Are you, are you happy with the work that all these agencies have done, or do you think there needs to be more? There could probably always be more. We just got to figure out what more is necessary. Am I happy with them? I'm not unhappy. But you asked me that after, after my son's back, and it's going to be, I'm happy. <laughs> all right? Because in, in law enforcement, it's always goal-oriented, you know? Go to go to work, put a smile on your face, get the job done. I know that they're putting their effort, 150% effort into this. And I appreciate that. And I'm hoping it will pay off with rotation. Do you think Katie and Chris are suspects? I have no idea. Sebastian's been missing. So he's, okay, so the cop said nobody is considered, you know, really a suspect. Like, suspect but they haven't ruled anybody out and then you know he kind of says i don't know i don't know because i think he wants to keep an open mind Staying for more than a month now what keeps you getting up every morning going out and searching for him being a dad having perseverance wanting him to come home while well, wanting to watch him finish growing up do you wear this every day? Talk to me about this shirt. This right here is my own billboard to find my son. People notice people. People notice what people are wearing. So I am a walking handout. I have these in my car. Have you, how do you select that photo? It's so cute. Because it's cute. <laughs> it's got a smile. Told you he was giving them out. He said he had them in his car. He said, yep. Give a warm from my We don't want to think about you, Ruby. Uh, um, yeah, so he definitely does. Um, Jules of all trade creators said, made a good point. No, Ellie officially made the statement that they saw photo Sebastian taking out the trash. Yeah, so do we know? What are you doing, Mia? Let me put myself back up here. She's just stretching. Sorry about that. She's a big dog, you know. She's got long legs. She's got a stretch here and there. Those are her ears are really loud. Um, so my I just I I want to know who was it who said that Chris was away at work? Like did law enforcement, I, I can't remember if law enforcement came out with that or if Chris came out with that because everybody is telling different stories. So maybe we can actually just like look it up really quick. Like, um, we can see that if it'll, it'll probably give us something like generic. This is all talking about them leaving. I'll have to look that up. Because this is all like, you know how they, they give you the newest news? I hate that when they do that. Okay. I'll figure that out. 
That's what I mean, Wes. Has law enforcement actually said anything? I'm just like, I'm racking my brain because literally everybody has something to say, but it seems like law enforcement. Um, I wonder if they... I don't even think they've come out and did a freaking press conference. Yeah, wow. Authorities give update. Here we go. Let's see when this is. This was a month ago. Well, he's been missing for a month. This ain't an update. Wow, I don't know. Got your cute jeans. I've got your cute jeans on. That's so funny. I um I actually got like a few pairs of a couple pairs of jeans the other day. I'm so excited about them. I'm like really excited. So um Trev time and I'm gonna put his link to his channel. Actually, I need to go back so I can get the actual oh I didn't mean to do that, but Trev time. Okay, um here is his the link to his channel. He's real. Oh, I thought I was on the screen. Let me get on the screen. <laughs> I'm like, I thought I was on the screen. Um, his channel is really good. Like I said earlier, he's tries to stay neutral with everything. Um, and I really respect that as a true crime creator, because sometimes, you know, um, you can get carried away, but he pretty much sounds like he kind of stays neutral. Um, now, there are some, you know, some creators that just don't stay neutral at all because they want the conspiracy too. So, and they do it on purpose. It's just kind of sad. So, um, here it is. This is on a premiere. So, um, like he said, it's on a premiere. This was um, pre-recorded, like pre-taped. And um, why does it show my own live over here to myself? I don't know. Um, but it's Nina Gomez. If this is going to be... Chris Proudfoot's ex-wife, the mother of his first child. She is going to come out and tell us about her experience with him. So we'll watch a little bit of this tonight, maybe like first hour, and then we will um, finish the rest of it like on our next live. Now I'm going to, oh yeah, she goes, she goes on right away and then he kind of shuts his camera off. So she just has hers on. Um, but I've never seen him with his camera on before. I'm like, I love that. I love when people put their cameras on because then you, you know, you see a face with a name. Yeah, Wist he has. And he's, he's a really good creator. He genuinely is. And like I said earlier, I found, I, I only know him through Crime Lines and Lies because he went on Brooks um, panel a lot, like especially with the Summer Wells case. He knows a lot about that. Um, so I'll go ahead and start playing it here. Um, I don't, we can maybe speed it up if it's kind of slow, but I want to make sure you guys, you know, hear the whole thing. Sure. So. So feel free to chat below when you are seeing this. Um, we do have a special guest who I'm going to bring up who is going to tell her story. This is Nina. Nina, thank you for coming on the yeah, show today. Thank you for really, having me, Trevor. He sounds like you talk Absolutely. Do you want to tell everybody who you are and just kind of um, get started? Absolutely. She's so beautiful. my name is Nina Gomez. As a lot of you know, um, I am Faith Proudfoot's mother. Um, Christopher Proudfoot is Faith's father, biologically. Um, and yeah, this is from today. I'm here to tell my story of what happened to myself and to my children. Absolutely. And I think it's a story that needs to be heard. So if you want to just open us up with, um, with the beginning of your story and just, and just get into it. Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, my name is Nina. Um, I, um, I live here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, I have three amazing children. <laughs> I met Christopher back when I was 35 years old. I met him on a dating website. Don't know what I was doing there, I guess. I wish I could take it back. <laughs> um. I started talking to him. He was stationed out in San Diego and we started talking back and forth, started um, 
wanted to get to know him a little bit more. I thought he was a great person in the beginning. But everybody is always perfect in the beginning, right? <laughs> we fail to see the red flags and we fail to notice things that we should in the beginning. So he made a couple of trips out here, asked me to marry him, and I made the mistake by saying I, I do. So we got married. Eventually, we uh, moved to San Diego. Um, I wasn't really ever prepared to move away again from New Mexico. I had went through a divorce a couple years prior to meeting Christopher. And my first husband was military as well, but I was married to him for nine and a half to 10 years, about to almost 10 years. We made it. Um, he's the father of my other two children. And I told him that, you know, I was remarrying and I, we were moving to San Diego and he was, he wasn't really for it. He was kind of against it due to the fact that he was stationed out at Fort Bliss which is in El Paso, Texas. And that's about like three and a half hours from Albuquerque. So he was, you know, he would always see his kids like every weekend. And um, he's like, how am I gonna see my kids? And I said, well, we'll figure it out. So we packed up after we said, I do. I don't remember the exact date when I got married to Christopher. And maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> We moved into the naval housing out there. And my son, um, Noah was three at the time. And my oldest was about seven, about seven years old. And she was telling me seven. <laughs> so we, I thought everything was great in the beginning. I mean, everything's always perfect, like I said. And then I started seeing bits and pieces of how Christopher really, really was. I was a stay at home wife um, due to my son being so young. I wanted to, you know, enjoy those years with him. Then my daughter went to school right down the street. So I was home every single day. And um, it just started seeing like Christopher change, like, night and day it was just it was awkward i felt really uncomfortable after a while we would argue about just the smallest things and um a lot of it also had to do with how he disciplined my children um well he disciplined her children just like sebastian not your child, but you think you can discipline them. I, he might not be guilty, but he's just guilty of being. I'm very protective over my kids. And I didn't want somebody else to discipline my children. I didn't want him talking ugly to them. Or hurting their feelings. And um, I remember one point in time where Christopher spanked my son really hard and I got very upset with him. And I said, you can't do that to my son. I said, he's three, he's a baby still. Like you can't just do whatever you want. I mean, and he got upset and he's like, well, you know, he needs to learn. He needs to man up. He's a man. I said, he's three. He's three. And as time went on, like I could see him getting more aggressive and more aggressive. And um, I stood up for my kids all the time. I didn't like how he, like I said, how he talked to them, how he wanted them to stand in the corner all the time. And 
I didn't like that. So I stayed a little bit longer. I ended up eventually getting pregnant with Faith. And it was probably, I want to say, maybe early September that I found out that I was pregnant with Faith. And um, I remember telling him that I was pregnant and he wasn't happy about it. So I called my parents back home here in Albuquerque and I told them the situation. And I said, well, Christopher wants me to get an abortion with Faith. And my parents said, no. You oh yeah, parents. And I said, I'm not. So I know he was very upset about me keeping faith at that point in time. He, so I came home, my grandma had gotten very sick and I decided to come home and after that, I just, I just kind of stayed here in New Mexico because at that time we weren't getting along and we were just like newlyweds and that should have never happened. And, but I saw things, like I said, that were, that were just, it, there, it wasn't right about him. So I moved home and I did my whole pregnancy by myself. And so I finally, um, my friends back there in California, my neighbors right across the street were actually calling me. I had one good friend, which is still a really good friend of mine to this day. She called me and said, that. you know, Nina, you know, Christopher's getting rid of your furniture and getting rid of your stuff. And I was like, what? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, you like, he's, he's giving away like your little, you know, your home decor stuff. Like he's giving away beds. And I was like, no way. So and this was about Easter time. So I had went out there. I made a trip, a special trip. I asked my mom to go with me and um, Isabella and Noah, they went with me and I, you know, I, I was still pregnant with Faith at the time. So we made it, I didn't tell him that we were going out there. So I kind of, you know, wanted to see myself because the neighbor also informed me that there was people at the house that shouldn't have been there. So I guess I kind of wanted to sneak up on him and see what he was doing right. And we pulled up into the driveway or into, yeah, into the driveway and he was coming out the front door with a bed that he was giving to the neighbor, which was my son's bed. And as soon you, I mean, the look on his face was like a deer in headlights. And he dropped the bed right there in the front yard, went back in the front door, slammed, slammed the door and locked it on my kids. And my mom told me at that point, she said, I can't believe he's doing this. Like, what, what is he doing? So I go in and I unlock the door and I said, what are you doing? I said, are you giving away my stuff? And he he had nothing to say. So he brought the bed back in because I knew that's what he was doing. And you know, the neighbor across the street. He takes like, the bed outside me. for fun. He was getting rid of it. So we stayed there. It was super uncomfortable. Well, my we, mom felt absolutely. the tension between you the both should of if us. You're with someone, you my know? children felt it as well. And at the time, um, Faith started moving. Like I could start, you know, I, could, I felt her moving around in my stomach. And I told Christopher, I said, look, I said, put your hand on my stomach. I said, can you feel her move? He said, no. You know, when you're pregnant, you always think that your spouse is going to be super supportive and be super excited. that you're pregnant and bringing 
a life into this world for him, right? But I didn't get that. I didn't get that support that I needed. So um, we had our, like a like a conversation my mom brought up between Christopher, myself, and her. And she had said, you know, do you not want faith? Like, do you not want this baby? And Christopher stated to my mom, he wasn't happy. And he said, what if one of them dies? What if Faith dies or Nina dies on the on the table or when she's having this baby? Like my mom said, don't talk like that. Like, why are you talking like that? They're still here. So we left again after a couple of days. We came home to Albuquerque and still I tried working it out where we were at, but it just, it just wasn't working. I wasn't, it, I just, I wanted out. And, um, I had faith on my own. I, I couldn't imagine. Christopher called the hospital. I told him on June. It was June 1st that I got admitted into the hospital. And Faith arrived like at a June 2nd, like about three or four in the morning. And he kept calling the hospital and kept calling the hospital and saying that my wife is in labor. She's there. But Christopher was just so he was just so rude and hateful and just, I mean, he wasn't even there. So then he arrived a couple days later after faith, I had had faith and he was, um, the doctors and the nurses there were on high alert due to the fact that they heard Christopher um, over the phone on how he was being disrespectful to the nurses that were on call that night as, you know, I was waiting to have her. And I asked that they not give him any more information. So he arrived. I had faith. She, he arrived a couple of days later, like I said. Um, and you could just tell the look on his face like he wasn't happy at all like didn't say hey you did a good job didn't say i'm so happy that you you know brought my daughter into this world like nothing and i remember my sister was holding faith and she had to ask chris do you want to hold her didn't even ask to hold his own baby he said i guess i guess So she handed him, she handed her over to Chris. And um, he stayed there with me for a couple more days because I had a C-section. And on one of the occasions, I can't really recall what was happening, but um, he was raising his voice and he was talking to me very disrespectful in front of one of the nurses. And she had told him, look, she just brought life into this world. She just got major surgery and you're yelling at her. And I have a problem with that. Hell yeah, nurse. She said, if you continue to do this, I'm going to have to tell um, social services to come down here. And I'm also going to have to ask you to leave the hospital and not return. So at that point in time, he kind of calmed down after he heard that. 
but unfortunately that didn't last very long. He continued to do that. So um, social services at the hospital was told to come down and um, he was pretty much, you know, she said, you know, you can't do that here. And uh, she was really concerned for my well-being at the time and also Faith's because, you know, here is Christopher, you know, dictating and telling me what I can and can't do and telling the nurses to do their job correctly and all these other things and raising his voice at me. And, you know, so they had to step in. And uh, so she said, this is it. Like, you're not, you're not, you're going to have to leave the premises. And, you know, and he got a little upset and he's like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to change. I'm going to be good. So, you know, they said, okay, but we're watching you. We're watching you. So after that, um, we had left. They discharged all of us from the hospital. And he didn't want to stay at my parents' house um, because my mom and dad live in a trailer and he doesn't like that. <laughs> it's a house, right? Still. So he... Um, rented a room at Kirtland Air Force Base and they have like lodging so there which is like a house old base housing and we ended up getting one of those like why not move in with her parents and her family they would help with child care and help them just to where they can get on their feet you know and we stayed there for a while I remember one night. It takes a village, you know. Where exactly, baby girl? We all had went out and got something to eat to bring it back to the room. He, I had went into the restroom. I believe that's where I was at, and Faith was in her car seat, and my oldest daughter was in the living room with my son and Christopher. Well, anyways, my um. I guess I wasn't moving fast enough for Christopher, but the baby started crying. Faith started crying. And, you know, she's crying and I'm trying to get to her as fast as I can. And he, when she was in the car seat, my oldest daughter at the time witnessed this with my three-year-old son. When she was in the car seat, he ended up hitting the car seat against the, the wall. And he's getting upset because she's crying. Like, are you kidding? And you know? then when she was in her car seat, there was a coffee table right there. And he ended up tossing her on the coffee table with the car seat because he was so irate that she was crying. And I said, hey, I said, what's your problem? I said, what are you doing? Like, don't, she's a baby. She's going to cry. I wish I would have just... I wish I would have never met him. Aww. Like she's genuine. No, he I'm don't sorry. love her. He's got he had CPS over there. New is it New Mexico? Yeah. I should have left a long time ago. Because <laughs> no children ever deserve this. My kids didn't. So he left again to San Diego. A couple of days went by. Then all of a sudden he's like, well, you know, why don't you move to Hendersonville? And I was like, why though you know in, in my head and i knew it was a bad idea i just knew it i knew it because our, our marriage was on the rocks i wasn't happy he wasn't a good father figure to my children i don't know why i said yes she thought it would fix things well anyways before 
So let me back up. So before he left back to to San Diego, Faith was Faith ended up um, going back into the NICU. She had um, she ended up getting jaundice and she went back to the NICU. So she was in the NICU. I want to say for a week, two week and a half, and that was when when Kathy, Chris's mo- mother, came out, flew down with her brother um, Duran. Duran guy or they call him Big D they came down and uh she was in the NICU and that was when I felt like a plan was made because we like I said our marriages were it was on the rocks and one of my neighbors had told me in San Diego they had warned me they had said Dina be careful because Christopher is coming up with a plan with his mother and they're planning on taking the baby away from you. And I was like, what? Like, thinking to myself, it can't be true from somebody that's supposed to love you, right? Like somebody that you're supposed to share your life with. Like, why would he want to take the baby away from me? And she warned me. But I was like, no, why would they do that? So then after Faith got out of the NICU, um, we were no longer staying in in, um, base housing. We were staying at one of the NBC suites down here. um, Then his uh, mom came up with an idea. She goes, well, since you guys, you know, we'll be moving to Hendersonville. And I was like, "Ah." we kind of, I, I felt like, okay, well, maybe and he's like, well, you'll get help. You're going to get help from my family. And, you know, but I was already getting help here from my parents, you know, with my other two children that they helped me raise. So that I went along with it. Like, you, like I said earlier, even though I knew it was wrong to go, I still went hoping that my marriage would work out. So she um, she ended up taking Faith, although I was against it, Kathy Bowers Hawks and um, her brother, Duran, ended up taking Faith. And my mom and dad were like, my mom started crying and she goes, why are you letting them take the baby? And I said, because Christopher said that, that um, it's going to be too hard for her to travel or travel, you know, to to travel and I so she oh I'm sorry they went back so Kathy and Big D went back to Tennessee so it was two weeks later about three weeks maybe three weeks later she, Kathy ended up coming back by herself I do apologize she came back by herself to pick up faith she was here in Albuquerque for one night and just and I was even though I was against it I let her go with with Kathy because Christopher said it was going to be too hard to travel with her being a new baby. So he came out from San Diego, um, rented a U-Haul, packed all our stuff, and we pretty much left. And that's how I ended ended up in Hendersonville, Tennessee. That's when my whole life changed that's when my nightmare happened we lived with his mother and his uh, stepfather terry for about a good month because our apartment wasn't going to be ready until the end of august about the end of august so it was really uncomfortable living there. You know, Terry and Kathy would always bicker at each other and she'd be bickering with Christopher. And, you know, my kids were a problem, an issue. It was always something. Um, I felt really uncomfortable and I wanted to come home. I just wanted to come home to everything that I knew. I wanted my mom and my dad, even though I was a grown woman, I needed that. 
So, we all had to get along, try to for the most part, but it was just an awkward situation. I always felt like we were the outcast. Um, never felt accepted by the Proud Fits or the Bower Socks. On one occasion, Christopher was cutting my oldest daughter's nails and she didn't want her nails cut. And Christopher, you know, grabbed a hold of her hand and she pulled her hand away. And my daughter at the time had braces. He backed hand Isabel in the face and busted her whole lip open. I should have left, but I didn't. And I was like, oh my God, like I, I, I have, I can't be here. I can't, I can't, I don't want to be here anymore. So I would come up with every excuse just to come home. But yet, you know, that never, I couldn't come home. So finally we went and we moved into, into the apartment. And a phone call like as soon as Christopher was leaving he settled us in got a storage unit of what couldn't fit in the apartment he got everything ready all right him and his family as soon as he knew that we were comfortable he left back to San Diego But the night prior to him leaving, he had um, got a phone call or text message that night. And it said something like, hey, baby, or around something like that, saying that when are you, when is your flight coming in? And I was like, what? Like, who's texting him? So I did confront him. And like he said the on one of the podcasts is that I did slap him. Yes, I did slap him across the face because I would too. Who is he talking to at this time and tells and saying and he, I mean he could say that she was lesbian, I mean, up and down, but I I mean at this point in time I, I didn't know what to believe. And I was like, okay. So then after that following day, he finally left. His mother came to pick him up to take him to the airport. And he went back to San Diego. And I was left in Hendersonville with three children and pretty much no help from anybody. So I have found a job, I had a job and Kathy helped, you know, helped once in a while and I needed to find a babysitter. So his uh, biological father, Michael, and his stepmother, Linda, at that point in time, offered their services and said that, you know, they can take care of my two older children. And um, Faith, or Kathy didn't want Faith going over to Michael's house. So she took care of her. And at that point in time, Christopher, we're, we were still communicating. And like I said, our relationship, our marriage was on the rocks. So my oldest daughter had gotten sick and she has upper respiratory issues. So I took her to the emergency room in Hendersonville and that's when Hendersonville transferred her to Vanderbilt. Is that what I believe that hospital's name is? And I was kind of frantic because I was like, well, what am I going to do with my three-year-old son and with the baby? Like, who's going to help me? 
So I was, you know, I called Chris and I told him, I said, hey, I said, can your mom watch, you know, Faith or can somebody help me? You know, everybody was so quick to help me that at that point in time. So Faith stayed with Kathy and Noah Bryce went with his sister, Melissa. And I went with my oldest daughter. We got transported down downtown. And so we stayed there. I can't re recall how many days we were there. And Christopher had, I, you know, I'd check on the kids, see how they were doing. And um, that point in time, I was like, okay, well, we got discharged, telling everybody, okay, you can bring Noah back and telling Kathy, okay, I'm, I'm going to be home so you can bring Faith back. Thinking that my children were going to come home to me. Uh, I get back to the apartment complex and I pulled into the parking lot and I see Melissa just like just pulled in right next to me. It seems like they were already there waiting for me to get there. And then she said, I can't stay. I would love to stay, but I can't stay because I don't know what they were doing. And she does, you know, my son gets out of her van. And then we walk inside and I was waiting, you know, for Faith to get there. And we weren't there, but less than maybe five minutes. And I hear a knock at the door. And I was like, oh, great, Faith is home. And it was Kathy's friend, Patty, that's an attorney. And she said, are you called me by my real name, Gomez? And I was like, yeah, and she said, you've been served. <laughs> what? She said, you have a protection order against you. Oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. You can't I didn't watch this. Part. I got to, a, like, right before this. Oh, my lordy. What? That's what they do. That's what they do. They're not narcissistic. I'm sorry, but he's abusing her. He's hurting their children, well, her children and then stepchildren. Um, sound familiar? And then when she does, when she's about to get out of it, like he's probably knowing she's going to be going, like she's out. He puts a restraining order on her to make her look like the bad person. So when he goes to court and tries to fight for custody, it looks better on him. That's usually why they do it. I ain't no dummy. And Chris is filing for first. And neither is she. And I was like, what? So then I go back, you know, and thinking like, like, like my heart just drops. Like, what am I, what? Like, is this a dream? Like, <laughs> this can't be happening to me. Like, this cannot be happening to me right now. <laughs> so then I get on the phone and I try calling Chris and he didn't answer her. And then I was like, you know, rushing around and I get my kids in the truck and I go to, I go to the Gallatin um, police department and I, you know, was ringing the call button and like finally 30 minutes later, somebody shows up and I told them what happened and I showed them the paper and they said, yep, we can't help you. What could they, what could he have possibly told them to get one? Do you know how hard it is to get a restraining order for real, for real? It's pretty hard. They don't just hand them out. Like, you know, here's your restraining order. Literally, you got to be like, sometimes you got to be bloody and beaten before they'll do anything to help you. Wow. He's sneaky. CPS in it up. Man. And then, ugh. Restraining order. Oh man, that's dirty. I don't care who All you I are. All I can think about is my baby. Like, how am I gonna get my baby back? Like, why is this happening to me? Oh. 
<laughs> so I go to Kathy's house. And I knock on the still, door. I'm going to pause it for a minute. This woman is still so affected that we're 36 minutes in and she hasn't, not for one second, stopped crying. I feel terrible for her. No matter if Chris is guilty or not guilty of anything with Sebastian, this interview needs to be heard because this woman was done dirty. And I remember I had a uh, Christopher's stepmom, Linda, on the phone with me. She was on speakerphone and I told her what was going on. Take Little did one. I know everybody was in on this. Knew it. Oh my God. Family too. And Terry answered the the door, which is Chris's stepfather. And um he told me that I need to get off of his fucking property. And here little Noah who's three years old and my Isabella is seven. And they're standing behind me. And I said, please tell me what's going on. I said, we're safe. I said, please give me my baby back. And he told it's me. Her ba I don't, it property. is her baby. He wasn't there for shit. I couldn't even imagine that. Oh, my gosh. And he took imagine. out a green and black baseball bat. And he told me to fucking leave or he's going to bash me and my kids' heads. So me and my kids walked back to my truck and we got back in it and I was like, oh my God, what do I do? This is a nightmare. What am I going to do? And Chris was inside of the house with the baby. I saw his shadow and they lied for him and they said that he was in California and he really wasn't. So we go go back to the apartment and I'm trying to gather all my thoughts together. I'm trying to keep as calm as I can for my other two children, but all I could do is just cry and just think like, what is my next move? What, what am I going to do now? I'm so far away from home. I'm far away from my parents. I'm far away from everything that I've ever known. That's got to be terrifying. So then I make a call to my brother. Who if you guys don't mind hitting that like Phoenix, that. And I told him what was going on and he was so upset and he's like, oh my God. And he's like, have you called mom and dad yet? And I said, no. And he told me himself that day, he said, you're going to fight. You're going to fight like hell to get Faith back. You don't leave that baby in that state. You fight like hell to get her back, whatever it takes. And that's what I did. I called my mom and dad. And it had to have been after midnight here. So about like one something our time there. My dad answered the phone. And I couldn't talk. All I could do is cry. I couldn't get the words out. And finally he said, calm down. Please calm down and tell me what happened. And I told him. <laughs> I said, Daddy, they took my baby. <laughs> and 
all he could get out is, oh no, they hurt my baby. And he started crying. And he woke my mom up. And he said, you hang in there, we're on our way. That's a good feeling to have, though, knowing your family's coming to help. So every single day, I worked. I worked at a local Great Flips out there. And I went in from the time it opened to the time it closed. Wow, that's hard work. Being on your feet like that all day. After all this had happened. I went to my bank account and to my savings. I've been saving money through this whole entire time, but I've been using it since we were out there so I can help support my kids and myself. But I little did I know that Christopher wanted me to use all my money because he didn't want me to have anything to be able to leave. So I wouldn't retain a lawyer. So that morning before I went to work and dropped my kids off at the time, Michael and Linda, which is Christopher's biological father and his stepmother were still helping me watch my kids because they still had to work. And I went into my bank account and I remember, I only had $1,100 in there. And that, and I was looking through the phone book or looking through, you know, my phone and seeing, well, I need to get a lawyer. Who can I get? Thank God for Mr. Edwards, because I went into the office, his office before, you know, um, I called into work that day pretty much. And I said, I need to, I need to, I need to just think, I said, I need a day off. So I went into his office and I ended up um, doing a consultation with him. And I remember him, you know, he told me what his fees were and he told me, you know, I told him the situation. And he was in shock and he goes, my God, he goes, this all happened like you should have never came out here. And I said, I know I should have never, you know, should have never came out here. So at the time, you know, I explained the situation to Mr. Edwards and I was crying. And I said, Mr. Edwards, I said, I just want my baby back. And then I remember I still had my wedding ring on at that point in time. And I slipped off my wedding ring and I sat it on his desk. And he looks at me and I said, please, sir, I'm going to do anything just for my baby back. He said, you're all I have. Please help me. I remember he took out his little magnifying glass and he looked at it and he he put his head down and he goes, God, he goes, you know, I work for money. I said, and I know, sir, I said, and I promise I will pay you every dime that I can. Just help me bring my baby home. And he said, you got yourself a lawyer. And, oh, man, that's a beautiful thing when you can get help like that. My lawyer, who's supposed to charge me like 5%, charged me like 3 He's like, I can't even, I shouldn't even be doing this. Like, he wanted to do it for free, really, but he couldn't. Got to make money, you know. And mine was a car accident. But it was because of the charges. And he fought. The he next fought like hell isn't good. Me.
we went to um everything happened in Gallatin Courthouse. My parents were there. We went to the first trial and I remember walking in the courthouse and my stomach was turning. I hadn't seen my baby. And they had my baby there. Just in just in arm's reach and I couldn't even hold her and I couldn't even kiss her and I couldn't even tell her I love her. She just wanted a baby. She gave birth to that baby. He wasn't even there. Like, it, I mean, it's not a different, it's no different, but it's almost a little more of a mind F when you're lit, when he literally goes to the hospital and someone has to ask him, he finally arrives and someone has to ask him if he wants to hold his own child. And he says, I guess so. I wonder how, how long he held, held her before he handed the baby back. And it's not like because he was never around kids before because she has kids. So we went to trial. I don't know what you want to call it—a trial, a hearing. I didn't. I, I think I was just yeah, so oblivious to everything at that point because I was so heartbroken that my baby was gone. <laughs> and we go into the courtroom, and all I had was my dad in there. <laughs> And his their side, all the benches filled up with his family being oh. loud and laughing. <laughs> and it was just my daddy and me, Mr. Oh. Edward. I'm so glad she had her daddy, though. Her dad, oh. And I remember the judge. His attorney, just everybody in there, <laughs> all the hurtful things that they put on black and white about me, just the eyes glaring at me and making it seem like I was a bad person. <sighs> and I sat there. And he asked me a couple of questions and I answered. One of them was, why did you move out here, Miss Broadfoot? I said, Your Honor, to try to make my marriage work, so in which it didn't. I said, I made a mistake by coming out here. I made a mistake by trusting somebody. And I said, if I could change back the hands of time, I probably wouldn't have even came out here. And they did whatever they were doing and then the judge, you know, said that I only had visitation with faith and they all had to be supervised. So then the supervised visitation started happening and um, we would visit faith. And I remember one visitation that had happened at a park. I can't recall the park's name. 
but there was a duck pond and really nice playground for the kids. I remember Kathy showing up with Faith. And um, we all sat there, got Faith out of the car seat. And I was loving on her and kissing her and telling her how much I love her. How much we missed her. And I, I handed her to her big sister. And I took a picture of those two. And my oldest daughter was crying. We only had about, I believe it was between 20 and 30 minutes of visitation with Faith once a week, if I'm right. There's a lot of things that after so many years, it's hard. Like I would just remember like the big things that happened and that was one of them. It was between 20 and 30 minutes. And my son was there. And then Kathy got her ready to leave. They had to leave first and then we left after. I remember holding my son in my daughter's hand and we we're walking back to my vehicle. And my son started crying. And we, I started crying and then my daughter started crying. And he said, Mama, I'm gonna run super fast, Mama. I'm gonna go grab Faith and you meet me on the other side of the park, Mama. Oh. I'm gonna run so fast and then you drive off, Mama. Oh my God, um, I got goosebumps. Her son literally wanted to kidnap his sister. He didn't think about it being kidnapped, but he for his mom, because he could see how probably broken she was. Kids try to fix things, you know, even though they, they don't know how really. The but pain. They, they're in good spirit. That Christopher and his family has brought to my family is the pain that we'll never forget pain that we live with every single day of our life <laughs> and I remember that very clear and we went home we had another trial a couple weeks later it was um, I believe I want to say it was in maybe November, either in October or November. I can't recall the dates. But at that trial, I was praying to God and to my God that we were gonna bring faith home. And we went to that, that court, that courthouse and with my mom and dad and Isabella and Noah. At this point in time, my mom was going to testify against Christopher. My son was going to, no, my son, my daughter was going to testify against Christopher. And they had said, his lawyer at the time had said, yo, don't let her, her daughter testify. And um, So we went without it, nobody testifying that day. Christopher had ended up getting, um, he was talking at the time. Judge was asking him, 
all kinds of questions. And he made me look like a monster. He made me look like I was the problem. He made me feel awful about myself and saying all these things in front of these people that weren't even true. It wasn't even true. And then it came to my attorney talking. And at that point in time, I was just like, gosh, like, oh God, please let a miracle just like let this just be over with. When people tell lies and when they say hurtful things about you, you just feel so disgusting about yourself. And that's the way I felt. And I remember we needed to break and come back. And Mr. Edwards at that point in time went into the chambers with the judge. And I don't know what was being said, being done back there, but he was in there for a while. And we ended up coming, but he ended up coming back out. Court was back in session. Everything was, you know, we're going back and forth again. And at some point in time, the judge just had enough. The judge was done hearing everything that had happened. And Christopher, you know, was speaking and the judge just said, that's enough. Like, I don't want to even hear what you have to say anymore. He's like, you premeditated this. This was premeditated. You knew exactly what you and your family were doing. You brought this woman out here with her children and you guys knew exactly what you were doing. Absolutely. And he said, 8.30, Gallatin's Sheriff's Department, that's where the exchange is gonna happen. My heart. Oh man. My heart just dropped, like, <laughs> and my attorney looks at me and he said, you just won. Oh. You won, and my, like, I wanted to scream. I wanted to hit my knees, like, and all I could think about is, like, I couldn't wait to wrap my arms around my baby again. And the judge, I mean, the judge, you know, everybody was hysterical on his, on his side, of course. Oh, huh. Yeah, all those people. And my, my daughter. All those people that were on his side giggling because she only had her father with her as for support. Bet they weren't giggling after she won. Daughter and my mom were waiting out there. And I remember his uncle going out there and he swung open the door and he was so angry and my daughter overheard him say she won she was like she won and um i remember my, my dad was still sitting behind me and you know and he and he had tears in his eyes and he's like let's go and our attorney, my attorney followed me outside and we went out and they're just there. I don't, there was just so much chaos coming from the Proudfoots. And we went outside very humbly and um, he took us in back of the court, the courthouse the other way. And right there and then I hit my knees. I finally could oh, be relieved. Of like, I big, like, oh my God, I just. You did it. We did this. And he said, 8.30, go pick her up. I said, thank that you, Mr. Be Edwards. I said, I, I owe you my life to get my, I mean, you help me get my baby back. 
So then we went back to our track and we went back to the apartment. We packed what we could and we pretty much left everything else behind. Okay. I think that's a good place to pause it. So I just want, I wanted to get a little bit of it out, but um, we'll do the rest of this interview tomorrow. We have another hour of it. So she's got more to say this poor woman. That's all I can say. And Trev time, you know how to do an interview. I'm loving the way that he did this. He literally let her have the floor. He, you know what I mean? I love this. I love this way of interviewing. I love this because, I mean, I like it when people talk back and forth, you know, ask questions and get answers, but he literally is just letting her, he said, he, I don't know if they had, they had to have talked, you know, before this, obviously, but he must've just been like, just tell your story. It looks like he covered his camera up maybe with a piece of paper because it doesn't look like it's turned off and don't have an emoji. So maybe just covered it up. So she would have the, have the whole floor, but. It's, that's amazing. He He's really good creator. If you're following the Summer Wells case, he's very like, I feel like he does unbiased coverage. He's just really good. She's really good. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jan. She does need her story out. And I, so what I think we'll do is maybe we'll do an earlier live and play this because, you know, I just, um, and if you guys want to, let me put his chat or his link in the chat one more time. That way, oops, wrong way. Whoops, what am I doing? Um, that way it's not just on the screen. You know what I mean? It's in the actual chat. And this one will be the one from five hours ago. And he has one, he has summer wells. He has, um, this case here. He really puts his heart into him. He really does. He's a good creator. She came forward for Sebastian. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary Beth. If, uh, Vincent's sleeping, maybe I'll jump back on for a member's live or something. The other day I was so like last night. I got off the live and I was just up. I was so awake. I'm like, what am I going to do? Because Vincent was sleeping. And for some reason when he's sleeping, I feel like I have to be sleeping. Like something's going to happen to me if I don't go to sleep when he goes to sleep. I'm just, I'm a weird person. Mm -hmm. Go get her and bring her home. Yep, Tiffany, you're right. She, absolutely. Yeah, I believe that that's his only child. Yeah. Yeah, because he has CPS charges over there in New Mexico and then also in Tennessee. But he failed to tell Nancy a lot of that, you know. Let me put um, Trevor's link in the chat one more time. Mary Beth, you're so good at doing that. You and, Jan, you and Jan. Thanks, Mary Beth, for always getting the lights up and helping. I appreciate that. Good, Holly. Yeah, go, whenever you go over there, tell him, you, you know, I sent you. Um, I don't know if he even knows who I am, but he's he's a pretty good creator. I like him. Uh, let's go ahead and see the poll. The poll. I mean, y'all did. You did the poll. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's out of the water. Usually, sometimes our polls are really close. So the poll was, do you think Sebastian, and as I'm reading, you can still vote. Um, do you think Sebastian's mom and stepdad are involved in his disappearance? The, it was yes, no. Just Chris is, Chris is involved. Just Katie is involved. So 90% said yes, that they're both involved. Um, no, 6%, just Chris involved 3%, just Katie involved 2%. Oh, Katie involved 1% and then Chris 3%. And it kind of changed when I was reading it. There's something up. I, I mean, I, the only thing is, do we, do we know when Chris was away at work? Like for sure, because I've only heard from him that he was away at work. I'm, I, I can't remember hearing it from like investigators. I want to hear it from the police. I want to know what, what's going on. Do you love it? Oh, good, Mary Beth. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you liked it. Those candles are really good. It'll last you forever. Vincent did a He did an experiment when we got it. Because, um, oh, look, look, my screen's weird. Um, Because... Candles at Bath and Body Works, they normally last 35 to 45 hours. And I knew this prior because I looked one time. So I was like, these things go so fast. And then the candles that I have, they're soy. And they're actually handmade by a woman company. Shout out to the women. Um, and they're 100 plus hours burn time. Like Vincent was counting 
He was, he was lighting it every night and then counting it. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. Yes. No proof after Texas Roadhouse. Yep. I just, there's something, there's something up. And I know that we cover a lot of cases and we're like, there's something up. There, Chris's story is changing a lot, a lot. And he's talking, oh, sorry. He's talking over her. So she's, we're not really hearing Katie's side too much. Do you know what I mean? Like we want to hear more. I want to hear more from her. Yes. You're welcome, Otto. I know. I guess that whenever I get off too. Because I, I get tired and then I'm like, no, then pop back on. <laughs> I'm like, I'm awake. But yeah, Trev Times interview with Chris Prophet. I made sure I put that banner up because it's kind of easier to do that. That way people can see it. Also, if you have any information over Sebastian's case, please call the Sumner County Sheriff's Office or 911 or at the Sumner County Sheriff's Office number is 615-451-3838. So thank you guys all for being here tonight. I appreciate it so much. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back earlier for a members live. I think I'm going to schedule it around one o'clock and then, um, we'll, maybe we'll do the rest of this during the day. And then maybe tomorrow night we can go and do another, um, like Idaho stream. Cause I have those two more documentaries to show you guys. So maybe we'll do something like that, but you never know because, um, things happen, you know, in true crime and we have to pop on. Did you guys see my post about Chad uh, Doerman trying to, he's pleading insanity called that one. Knew he was going to do that bull crap. He ain't insane. He wasn't insane enough to say, don't hurt my dog. Man, it kills me, but, um, I'll be back tomorrow with case updates. Maybe we'll just do like case updates tomorrow night. I don't know. We'll figure it out, but, um, I will see you guys all tomorrow. Don't forget to go over. Let me throw it in the chat really quick. My other channel I don't know how many subscribers. We're over 400. Once we hit 500, we're definitely going to be doing a giveaway and we're going to be going live. So make sure you go over there and you subscribe. Um, but thank you guys all for being here tonight. I appreciate you. I will see you guys tomorrow, um, either in the members live or on our live tomorrow night. Bye guys.